doesn't matter if your protein comes from animal foods or plant foods. Actually, no. Getting enough protein is really important for maintaining and building muscles. And through that, it also helps to improve cardiometabolic health. And it's extraordinarily important for preventing sarcopenia, the loss of muscle mass as we age. It's estimated that females will lose 10% of their muscle just in the perimenopausal period. And sarcopenia is like the major contributor to uh, frailty in our older years, which decreases quality of life, increases things like falling and breaking a hip, all the bad things that I know I'm hoping to avoid. And the preponderance of evidence suggests for aiming for 1.2 to maybe 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram body weight, which is actually double to triple the recommended daily allowance. But the cool thing is it doesn't matter if that protein comes from meat, from fish, from eggs, from tofu, from legumes, or from broccoli with the caveat that we want to be getting protein from diverse sources. There are nine essential amino acids and six additional amino acids that are considered conditionally indispensable, which means we can make some, but most of the time we probably still need to get them from food. And what we call a complete protein is a food that delivers good amounts of all nine essential amino acids. Almost all animal foods are complete proteins. The only exception that I can think of off the top of my head is collagen or gelatin. Whereas most plant foods are incomplete proteins. Complete plant proteins include soy and soy products, hemp hearts, quinoa, buckwheat, amaranth, and the classic vegetarian combination of beans and rice. But here's the thing. Amino acid deficiencies are incredibly rare and typically only seen in the context of starvation and gross malnourishment. Provided you are getting enough protein and you're getting your protein from a diversity of sources, you don't really need to worry about complete proteins and not complete proteins. And you don't need to make sure that you're getting a complete protein with every meal. You don't have to have the rice and beans together. You can have rice at one meal and, and beans at the next. So from the perspective of getting the protein our bodies need to make all of the proteins that we are made out of and to assimilate into our muscles, as long as you're getting enough protein, it doesn't matter what foods the, that protein came from. That being said, all of the different protein foods that I have mentioned do have different overall health impacts. For example, if we wanted to look at cardiovascular disease risk. From that perspective, seafood and legumes are the most beneficial of protein dense foods, but broccoli also very beneficial, but not a, it's not a super concentrated source of protein. 